Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. In this video, we're talking about Vita Medical. This is a request from a viewer of my channel, and uh, this is not about uh, Eva Peron or uh, a musical starring Madonna. It's a Vita, not E Vita. So, a Vita Medical, very exciting company where their, uh, their sort of their specialty is, and it's dealing with burn injuries, and the standard of care for burn injuries is quite horrible currently, and we definitely need an improvement in the standard of care, and that's what Avita Medical is doing now. So it is a company that's doing things that are going to be beneficial for society at large, and that's always a benefit. So let's get into, into what Avita Medical does. So this is a company that was founded by Fiona Wood. For those who don't know who Fiona Wood, she was... 2005 Australian of the Year. She was also uh, she's also named an Australian Living Treasure, which I didn't know they did. And uh, between 2005 and 10, she was voted most trusted Australian by Reader's Digest poll. And that sort of poll, well, I don't think you'll find any politicians anywhere near the top of that poll at all. Uh, funny enough, uh, meteorologists uh, typically are considered some of the most trusted. Uh, scientists or people, so I should be considered a very trusted Australian. Uh, all jokes aside, Avita Medical, uh, so uh, because they are, they are treating burn injuries and they use regenerative, regenerative medical procedures doing that. So regenerative just means they use your own body's healing process to, to heal itself. So uh, it's sort of an in thing right now. And I've, I've mentioned before, they deal with burn injuries, defects, diseases, using their thing called the resale system. And their resale system was the first PMA, which is pre-market approval uh, for approved burn products in 20 years. That was in September 2018 for acute burns for over 18 years and old people. So this current standard of care, which is split thickness skin grafts, is quite horrible. I've never had a burn injury, so I've never gone through this procedure, but just reading up on it, it is quite bad. So what doctors do is they get a, a graft of your own skin, uh, which in itself is an injury. So they cause injury to heal an injury, and they use that uh, skin graft uh, to heal your current injury or your current burn. Uh, it's quite painful what they do, prolongs hospitalization, costs a lot of money, it increases the risk of infection, uh, more than likely you're going to have scarring. So all those things are what Eva Avita Medical is trying to solve with their resale system. So the resale system, autologous, um, so that's autologous is just using your own cells and tissues, so it's sort of a device that takes a little sample from your own skin and it's a spray-on device and if I see the, the device now, it's a spray-on device, takes your own skin and tissue and uses that to spray on your own, uh, your injury and that in a way heals itself. So healing process without resell, it sort of heals from the outside in and with resell, it's, uh, it heals from the inside out. And I've just included two diagrams on the left there to show you that. So uh, a lot of advantages uh, with resale over the standard or the current standard of care, and one of the main things, it's less painful. Um, so less costly, less painful, no scarring. So that's one of the other major benefits of this. Market opportunity. So yeah, so a lot of market opportunity here. So the current market they're in with their um, acute skin burns for 18 plus and older is around 200 million or so. So that's inpatient burns. And then they can expand through, uh, you know, upwards of 2 billion potential there. And then we've got genetic areas as well. So a lot of potential here. There are a few competitors within the market. I think there's even a few Australian companies uh, doing the same sort of thing, trying to solve the um, current state of the care with burn injuries. So uh, it looks like Evita are starting to gain some traction based off their revenue growth. But um, it looks like it's a uh, potential, a lot of potential with Avita, but uh, whether they can, just because they have potential, doesn't mean they're going to succeed with harnessing that potential moving forward. And we can sort of see that with the financials, and this is where things start to break down for me when I look at uh, Avita Medical. I don't like to see some of the things I'm seeing with uh, the financials. 
So they are increasing revenues. That's a big tick. I like to see this sort of increase. They've gone from 1.2 million in financial year 18 to 21 million in financial year 20, so the previous financial year. Uh, increasing profit margins. But when you look at profit after tax and operating cash flow, that's actually going backwards. So it's actually increasing negative. negative. So uh, profit after tax last financial years down to minus 61 million and operating cash flow down to minus 33. That's not something I really want to see. Uh, the last few years, market cap has really gone through the roof. But the last uh, year or so, we're seeing the market cap really retrace. And when you look at operating expenses, that's something I really don't like to see is the total operating expenses really ballooning out. So at the moment, what we're seeing, even though revenue is increasing, operating expenses increasing at a greater rate than revenues. And what I want to see with the Vita Medical is the complete opposite, where revenue is increasing at a much quicker rate than total operating expenses. And when they get to that point, that's going to be an inflection point, and that's when you might want to buy in. But they're really loving, management is really loving to spend right now. And I've seen a few companies uh, hit the wall because of this very problem where they're increasing revenues, but their operating expenses is increasing at a much greater rate, and they come into big problems when that happens. It may not happen with the Vita Medical, but uh, there is that potential that might happen. Uh, the other thing I don't want to see here, uh, or I'm a bit dubious here, is share-based comp compensation has really increased in the past year. So that's something that's also a bit of a red flag. And the other red flag here is research and development expenses is not increasing all that much. And that's probably one area or one part of expenses I really want to see increase a lot is the research and development. That's because they might be looking at the future uh, and developing other potential um, candidates. But anyway, so that's one little tick or one little cross against the Vita Medical. And then uh, that's the yearly uh, financials. Then uh, we see the first quarter financials and the story has continued where expenses are really ballooning out. Uh, revenues went from 3.3 million to only 5.1, so not a large increase. Uh, Crow's profit margin has increased by 1%, but the operating expenses have just ballooned from 8.3 million to 14.9 million. A net loss has increased and the cash has gone from 74 million to 66 million. So we're starting to see the cash really being eroded. In their comments, they didn't mention why there's been an explosion in operating expenses. And I don't buy it. I think, um, I don't want to say they've lied, but they've sort of hidden the truth here. They've mentioned that the reason the expenses have really increased is because uh, primarily driven by additional costs of the company's status as a dual listed entity on NASDAQ. So they have listed on NASDAQ. And I don't see any reason why they really have to list on the NASDAQ. Um, there's... Companies are wanting to do this, but there's actually no reason. It just increases the cost, as you can see here. And the others mentioned, they just said they've commenced trials uh, for some things they're doing. But when you look at the operating expenses down below there, the biggest increase in operating expenses actually has been share-based compensation again. It's gone from 672000 to 3.3 million. So the largest increase in operating expenses has been share-based compensation and not some of the other reasons. So so I think they were being less than truthful in that, and that's a big bit of a cross against management. Now let's get to look at the chart. So unfortunately, again, um, uh, the market isn't buying into Aveda Medical during the past year. In 2019, this was a market, darling. The share price went from $2 to about $16 or so. I have a feeling they did do a share consolidation. So for full disclosure, I haven't been paying close attention to a Vita Medical. Uh, this was a request by um, a viewer. So I just had a look at it. Uh, I really like what they're doing. But um, yeah, 2019 share price was a market darling. But in the past year or so, just looking at this weekly chart, uh, the share price has started to retrace it back. And then if I zoom in on 2020, what the share price is doing, you can definitely see a downtrend forming in the share price during the past year. The 20, the 100 day moving average is represented by the blue line. Um, we've seen the share price hit that blue line about three or four times, or we're very near it three or four times. So that actually moving average is a line of resistance. Now we are possibly seeing a share price of $6 being a line of support. It's hit that a few times and bounced off it. So that could be some positive uh, positiveness when you're looking at the chart. But when I look at the next chart here, just to put in a, a, 
<clears throat> a downtrend line. So if you don't know how to draw a downtrend line, all you have to do is go look at the peaks, and if you can draw a line that connects the peaks, so if I go to the mouse here, peak here in uh, April 2020, peak here in June, another peak here in September, another peak here in October. And I can draw a line connecting all those peaks, and that's a downtrend. So what I'm looking for here is the share price to move through that downtrend on good volume, and that would be signs to me that the downtrend has stopped, and there is potential that $6 is a line of uh, support. If the share price goes below $6 on good volume, that would be quite bearish on the other hand of the scale. So uh, at, at this point, uh, even though I'm not keen to buy in Avita Medical until I see some good signs with their finances, some signs that they're keeping uh, expenses under control uh, at the moment with the share price in a downtrend, there's no point buying. That's just my opinion. You could have something different and I always encourage you to form your own opinions about a company and use those opinions to see whether you should buy or not. So my opinion on Avita Medical, I've always got to be make sure I can say Avita, not Avita, so Avita Medical. It is exciting technology that has societal benefits at large. So you can definitely see the societal benefits, so uh, that's why it's exciting. Now, you can just see by their revenue growth, uh, there is potential significant growth moving forward, but just based off their potential, but again, uh, potential does not mean or lead to long-term success. Uh, you need, um, I think in this case, uh, you need management to understand that costs are ballooning and you, they need to control costs. So costs are a major concern, especially those expense costs. Um, and in this sort of situation, continually doing capital raisings won't work. But they do have a lot of cash on hand, 66 million. So I hope they realize maybe uh, if those cash, if those, um, if those cash on hand really gets eroded, they need to look after those costs and um, hope they do have a plan moving forward. So they need to hit that positive inflection point. And that positive inflection point is the point where we start to see uh, revenue start to grow at a, a quicker rate than expense costs. That's when we're going to hit that inflection point. That's when I might become more interested in buying a Vita Medical. Also, just looking at technicals, uh, just be patient. It's in a downtrend. And when a company's share price is in a downtrend, the best thing to do is just be patient and wait for it to turn around. Even if you're very long-term bullish with this company, uh, if it's in a downtrend, just be patient. That's probably the best advice I can give. So Avita Medical, hope you've enjoyed this video on this company. So a very exciting company moving forward. Uh, but a couple of red flags that are keeping me from buying, and, and that's mainly to do with the expense costs and the, the downtrend with the share price. Otherwise, an exciting company. If you have a different opinion than me, make sure you leave a comment. And I'm always open to reading and digesting different opinions because that's how you learn. I could be wrong on many different facets with this company because this is a company I've just started researching in. So um, if you uh, have a lot of research, in, done a lot of research in this company, you have different thoughts than mine, I'm always open to reading those. So leave a comment. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. So if you do need financial advice based off your own financial circumstances, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.